This is our first out of Arizona national. Are you always pee free? Mm -hmm. Is that a New Mexico thing or just it's, El Moro? Um, it's a small park thing. Um, so a lot of smaller parks that don't have really high visitation, it's actually cheaper uh, to not collect a fee because we find that we replace those fees in donations and then we don't have to pay for background checks and training for fee collectors. Gotcha. Interesting. And really it's just, a, you know, as much time as you have, as much ability as you have, um, you know, good faith effort is really what we ask for. Gotcha. The reason why people really came here in the first place was because of that pool of water. It was the only really reliable water source within about 30 or 40 miles. Oh. People would write messages and their names and dates and things like that all along that wall. So you'll see all that history on the wall. You'll see Native American petroglyphs, writings from the Spanish conquistadors, and the U.S. Army Camel Corps, and uh, pioneer wagon trains. As you go along, you'll see little numbered signposts on the trail, and those will correspond with those little numbers, numbers. in the hands there. Hand print with a number in it. When we find that, then we stop and we read. So which way do you go that way? To the right. And Sina Pueblo. At, at inscription Sina. trail. Pueblo five mile inscription trail. That's the headland trail. Please stay on the trail. It's yellow. What? I've never seen a that yellow of a bird before, have you? No. Look but, how yellow it is. Well, yeah, well when we were... It. That's in the trees pretty well. And that has a yellow belly? We can't find any yellow belly. We can't find a name for him, so we're just going to call him yellow belly. No. That makes him sound like he's a oh, scaredy cat. Isn't it too mild? Just above the surrounding landscape from here, you can see how this spot came to be known as El Moro, which is Spanish for the headland or the bluff. The rocks themselves are rounded, but the pueblo. So that's that's man-made, like the coloring and squareness of it. Below it, it's more rounded. Attractive and sweet smelling, the pinon juniper forest you see now. The pool is under the rocks. There is no spring. The pool is fed largely by rainfall in July, August, and September. Oh, we've got petroglyphs now, guys. A testament to the many hundreds of years people have lived or stopped here. Each group of travelers, American, Indian, Spaniard, Anglo, left its mark in its own way. He keeps pecking into the rock using an animal antler or a harder rock called a hammerstone. Spaniards use daggers or horseshoe nails to inscribe their names and messages. Pioneers and other settlers along the trail of westward expansion probably used hammer and chisel, knives, nails, or other tools. In the early years of the Civil War, the California Column, as it was known, was sent to New Mexico to reinforce federal troops expecting Confederate hostilities. Orton held the rank of captain when the first cavalry was mustered out from March to October of 1866. He may have made this excursion as he returned. So it's inscription next 300 feet. And then we turn around and come back. Oh look, there's even more. How far do you think Lobo Ranch is from here, babe? I don't know, probably 100 miles. You want to go on the long loop? That's a different trail. You see a number down there? No. That is a tall rock. I know. How tall is the rock? I don't know. That whole thing up there is a rock? This whole thing is a rock. Isn't that cool how there's a tree coming out of the rock up there? Yeah. There's a bunch of trees coming out of the rock. Just that one though. Just all by itself. Pretty cool looking. It's the long tree. You know what this yeah. reminds me of? What? What? Up. Uh, those cliff walls that he wants to put his house. Yeah. He just needs a waterfall. He will have them. Water? Where those black spots are. Must be that if you go all the way around. Yeah.
All right, so let's open up the first page and take a look at what you guys got. So how does the rapid get into our backpack? That's a good question. I've seen sometimes when people like, let's say they take off a backpack and they're not watching it and they leave it way away from them. They walk away for a little bit. If the ravens saw how we opened the backpack, they saw that we found that zipper pulled on it and opened it up. They're really smart birds and they can imitate us. So if we left our things out and we were sort of disorganized and we left things everywhere and we walked away, it could potentially use its beak to open up that zipper. And I've seen them do it before, especially in the back of people's trucks. So it's really important to keep all of our stuff with us, take care of our trash, garbage, put everything away. Which inscriptions did you choose to write down? The, the goat. The I goat. did the same thing. And the bear paw. Awesome. Well, these look great. You did some of the rock talk. Did you learn some of these geology terms? Maybe. Maybe. We could do a high five or a handshake or the pledge. I like the pledge. Okay, sounds good. Stand up straight, put your right hands up, and repeat after me. As a junior ranger, as a junior ranger, I promise, I promise to protect, to protect all national parks, all national parks, and all plants, and all plants, and the animals, and animals, and rocks, and rocks, and people, and people who call it home. Who call it home. All right, good job, guys. Here you go. You already have one of those. This is our thirteenth badge. Wow. So who's in charge of the national park? The National Geographic. <laughs> Wires. Wire going up. I don't know what they have going on back here. That's not natural monitoring cable. That must be the monitoring cable. I can't focus. Hey! All these things are not going to be